A Stuart 7A model steam plant. This is part 5, making some more components for the reversing valve gear. I need to reduce the thickness of the reversing lever. So first of all, I tried it this way. But the brass is quite a soft metal and moves away from the tool. Instead of using the lathe, I thought I would use the milling machine instead. In this episode, I'm showing several wrong ways to do things, and spinning it in the chuck is definitely not the way to go. What I need to do is fit a milling cutter and use it to machine the reversing lever to the correct thickness. Here's the milling cutter, quite a big one, and it's fitted into an R8 collet, which holds it very securely. This clip shows the fabricated reversing lever clamped securely in the machine vise. All I have to do now is just mill across the top and cut it to size. Unfortunately, the camera moved, so I didn't get that shot very well. And now I don't need the boss to fit into the chuck, I can chop it off. And for this I'm using my old Burgess bandsaw. After rounding the end of the piece of bar, I'm generally cleaning it up on the 1 inch belt sander, followed by various grades of wet or dry sandpaper and a quick touch on the polishing spindle. The rounded end of the reversing lever looks about right. The lever's not the right shape though, it needs to be tapered with a bit of a bulge in the middle where the hole is. And in this clip, I'm applying quite a lot of marking out blue. I can never get this quite right, the brush is a little bit on the stiff side, so it always puts too much on. Now it's time to make the pair of links that will pull the expansion link across the slot in the valve fork. These components are part finished. Even though they are dimensionally accurate, I don't know why the builder didn't drill the holes through the spacers when he made them. I'm going to have to do this, and also they're actually the wrong size. They're a bit too big, I'm going to have to machine a bit off them. On one side of the levers, the spacer needs to be even smaller. I'm going to do the first job wrong. Not that I'm stupid, you understand, but sometimes it's a good idea to show the wrong way to do it, and what will happen if you do it the wrong way. Very much like a beginner would probably do it. So here's the part, held in the chuck by the very small bit at the end. I'm trying to avoid facing across the end, which will put too much pressure on the piece. Instead I'm taking small cuts from right to left, which in theory will not put quite as much pressure on this small component. Don't forget this part is only held in the chuck by the very end part and that is very small. So far so good, but when I get near the middle, watch. The part comes loose in the chuck. Why didn't the part come loose in the chuck right at the beginning of the job? It's all a matter of speeds and feeds relative to the diameter of the piece and where the lathe tool is at any given time. I've refitted the part into the chuck, but I'm holding it by the main body, so it's not going to jump out of the chuck this time. So what happened before? Well, it's all a question of speeds and feeds. If you think about it, the chuck is revolving at a constant speed. So the metal is going past the tool on the outer diameter much faster than it does when the tool gets nearer the center. Maybe if I'd been more gentle with the tool and taken finer cuts near the center, I wouldn't have had the problem. But it's never a good policy to hold a part by a very small protrusion that is too small to give it the correct mechanical support. Apart from leaving these parts oversized, the original builder did not drill the hole down the center. So I'm doing that on all four of them, starting with the center drill and following through with the number 40 twist drill, which is clearance size for 7BA. The size of stud I'm going to be using to hold these parts together. A couple of things to do to the pieces of flat bar. First of all, clean them up on some wet or dry sandpaper and countersink the holes at one side very slightly using a twist drill. Not only will this allow the small parts to fit perfectly against the pieces of flat bar, it will give a bit of a reservoir for some extra Loctite. I'm using Loctite 603 here and from my experience this is a better method than silver soldering the bars. Once I'd applied the Loctite to both of the small barrels and fitted them to the bar, I temporarily fitted them into my vise and applied some pressure to hold them together until the Loctite had set. And as you can see, when I tighten the vise, some Loctite runs out of the joint. After the Loctite had cured on the first part, I clamped the second part in the vise in exactly the same way. About an hour later, I started the big cleanup. As well as making the parts look good, I'm making sure that none of the barrel sticks out of the other side. Time now to trim off the excess at the end of the bars. A very easy job, first of all using my bandsaw, followed by my 1 inch belt sander. To remove all the tool marks, I polish them using the polishing spindle. This clip illustrates a problem in manufacture. The drawing probably assumes that you're going to use a casting. But a lot of builders would probably make these parts as I'm doing. 
It's quite difficult to hold these parts in position to illustrate what I'm doing. I've reduced the width of the two barrels only at one end to allow the drop arm to fit in between because the drop arm is wider than the expansion link. Here we go again, one more time. I'm doing something wrong to illustrate how you should not do the job. I need to machine a piece of phosphor bronze to make a bush for the oversized hole in the drop arm. And initially I was taking far too great a cut. That's why the tool was jumping about. And don't forget, as I've previously mentioned, as you move towards the center of a piece of work, it slows down. So therefore you have to slow your cut down as well if you want to get a good finish. For instance, if you put a piece of bar in the chuck and take a really fast cut down it, you're not going to get a good finish, even at the outside diameter, unless the piece of bar in the chuck is revolving at a very high speed. So don't forget, the general rule is that the less of the diameter, the less of the surface speed. But if the chuck is fitted with a larger diameter piece of metal, then the surface speed may be excessive. To allow for parting off, I'm just taking off a bit more of the metal, it will make parting off slightly easier. And now as you can see, I have plenty of tolerance. What I'm doing here is trying the drop arm in position, and then setting the parting tool to cut the bush to the correct length. A short while ago, I showed the drilling process using a centre drill first, followed by a number 40 drill, which is clearance size for a 7BA stud. A number 40 drill is definitely a clearance size for a 7BA bolt, but it's a tight clearance size. But that's what's shown on the Stuart model's drawing, so who am I to argue with that? I'm sure it will all wear together once it starts to run. Until all of these parts are held together in the bracket and fitted with the reversing arm, it's quite difficult to move the expansion link back and forth. But there's nothing wrong with the expansion link and the valve fork, I've already tested that. It's just a bit difficult to keep everything in alignment at this stage with everything being loose. In this clip I'm looking in the small drawer where I keep my 7BA bolts to see if I can find any suitable fixings, but no I can't. I'm not going to use bolts with a thread, obviously that would be terrible. I'll have a look and see whether a standard Stuart stud for holding a steam chest to a cylinder fits across this part. If it does, then that's what I'll use. If it doesn't, then I'll have to make my own. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.